Hey guys, how's it going? Thanks for watching my video. My name's Eric and today I'm going to show you how to make slow cooker chili. This is one of my favorite recipes. We're in December now, it's getting colder outside and this is something great to get going in the morning and have a delicious one pot meal in the evening and it fills the house with a wonderful aroma. Um, chili is really basic. This is my take on it. Uh, it's very versatile so you can add or omit things you don't like or add things more of something you do like. I mix it with a little bit of ground pork, ground beef. I'm also putting in some sweet Italian sausage. I like the contrast between the sweetness of the sausage and also the spiciness. It's a good combination the spicy sweet. I also got some regular pork sausage. Of course, we got some onions, some peppers. I got a couple jalapeno peppers we're going to chop up. Of course, we also have tomatoes and some beans. Great recipe. Uh, doesn't really take a whole lot of work other than the initial prep work to get everything thrown into the crock pot. But once that's done, you just uh, set it on low for seven, eight hours or high for four to five. And you'll have a delicious meal waiting for you. So let me show you how we start getting this chili going in just a second. All right, guys, I took the pork and the ground beef, kind of mixed it together here in the cast iron skillet with a little bit of olive oil. And you don't have to cook it all the way through because it's going to cook for many hours in the crock pot. So you can see here, you still got some red showing in the ground beef. This is perfect. I'm going to drain this and put it in the crock pot. And then I have a second batch of sausage, which I'm going to saute with the onions and some other ingredients. So I just had to do this in two separate batches because it's not all, all the meat. I got almost... Uh, four pounds of meat here it's not all going to fit in this cast iron so i got to do it in two batches so i'm going to transfer this to the crock pot i'll be back in just a second when we do the batch number two all right guys this is batch number two i already transferred the first batch to the crock pot this is the sausage the sweet sausage and the regular pork sausage so it's not completely done but that's fine like i said it's going to cook all day in the crock pot i kind of make a little opening in here and now i'm going to dump in some the onion, the red and green bell pepper, and I'm just going to cook this over medium high heat till it all gets a little cooked down a little bit. So we'll be back in a few minutes. Once this cooks down, you'll see how it looks. All right, guys, I've, it's been cooking for around seven, eight minutes. It certainly looks like a, an overload on onions and peppers, but that's because I'm cooking the whole batch with this two pounds of uh, sausage. I have the crock pot full of another two pounds of meat, so it'll all even out. But this is pretty much all we wanted to do. We just wanted to cook it just for a little bit, just to uh, soak up some of those flavors uh, from the juices when we cook that meat. I'm going to transfer this over to the crock pot and show you the next step in just a second. All right, guys, I've uh, put all the ingredients in the crock pot here. I turned it on high. You can see it's already steaming a little bit. Now we're going to add the rest of the ingredients and let the crock pot do its magic. So first we're going to add some spices. I got the chili powder. No chili would be complete without chili powder. A little bit of cumin. I'm going to put all the measurements down below the video, so... Uh, I'm using a little extra with some oregano, some chopped garlic. Oh, I love garlic, so I'm going to scoop out the every last bit of that. I got a couple beef bouillon cubes, just for flavor. A little bit of brown sugar to give it that sweetness I was talking about. I got two chopped jalapenos that have been seeded. Be careful when you cut these not to wipe your eyes. I made that mistake and uh, boy did it burn. I got a can of green chilies. I didn't drain it because I'm putting that little bit of that sauce in there. We got some tomato paste just to kind of bind everything together. Okay. And now we're going to add four cans of chopped tomatoes with all the juice. Now 
Now you can use any type of tomatoes. You can use stewed tomatoes. You can use the petite tomatoes, crushed tomatoes. I like these little diced tomatoes. They kind of break down anyway. I have a total of four cans of beans I'm putting in there. I have one pinto, one kidney. I'm going to leave those out. I don't want all the beans to turn to mush. The only two cans of beans I'm putting in at this point are the chili beans because they have a little bit of that chili flavoring in the sauce. So the other beans I'm going to leave off and I'll add those in a couple hours once this is all the flavors have kind of well come together. This is smelling delicious. All right, so two cans of the chili beans. That's pretty much it for the ingredients. I'm gonna stir this really well. I'm gonna salt and pepper it to taste. Well, actually, I'm not gonna taste it just yet, but I'm gonna salt and pepper it a little bit. And then I'm going to add a little bit of a dark beer, just to add a little liquid. I'm using Guinness. Any kind of stout would work as well. You don't have to use this. You can use uh, bouillon, uh, chicken stock, beef stock, whatever you want. I just like the little added flavor that the beer gives. That's about it. I'm going to stir this up real good. I'll show you how it looks like in just a second. All right, guys, I've mixed it all really well. This is how it should look like. It looks absolutely wonderful. It smells absolutely wonderful. At this point, I'm just going to season it a little bit with some salt, with some pepper. I'm not going to taste it just yet. I'm going to let these flavors meld together. Now, if you're going to be gone all day, just set the crock pot on low. And, uh, you know, when you come home, it should be ready. Since I'm home all day today, I'm going to leave it on high for around two, three hours. I'm going to come back at that point. Check how it looks, stir it a little bit, and then most importantly, I'm going to taste test it. At that point, season it to taste. We all have different tastes. If you think it needs more garlic, put more garlic in it. If you need more salt and pepper, put more salt and pepper. Uh, if you need more chili powder, more cumin, whatever you feel it needs, at that point, season it. Uh, there's no right or wrong way. It's really based on your personal preferences. So. That's pretty much it. I'm going to let the crock pot sit here on high for around two, three hours. We'll be back and check it out from that point on. Hey guys, welcome back. It's been around four hours. I've had this on uh, high for around two. I did taste it at that time. I did add some more chili powder and some more cumin and a little bit more salt and pepper. But it's looking really good. It smells absolutely wonderful. I kicked it down, down to low. And I'm just going to let it continue simmering for a few more hours until we're ready to eat. In the meantime, while we're waiting, and before I start cooking the cornbread we're going to enjoy with this, I thought I would do another beer review. This one is from Bootleggers Brewery, Rocco Red American Red Ale. Now this is a company in Fullerton, California, which is where I work. I've had many of their beers before they're very very tasty and I've never tried this one but uh, based on my experience with this brewery so far I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it I've been kind of getting burnt out on all these uh, IPAs they seem to be all the rage and so when I saw this American Red Ale I thought I'd give it a shot um, this won a bronze medal award in 2014 at the Great American Beer Festival so, cheers. Oh, that's good. Definitely has a hoppy aftertaste. A little mild bit of bitterness, but not too bad. And a little bit of citrus flavor there at the end. Very good. So again, Rocco Red American Red Ale from Bootleggers Brewery in Fullerton, California. I also wanted to mention, you know, most people are used to chili really hot and spicy. I have an eight-year-old son and a five-year-old daughter who I want to enjoy this. So that's why I didn't add a lot of heat. Uh, you can either add your favorite hot sauce to spice it up or what I have are these uh, red chili pepper flakes, 
which you can put individually in your bowl if you want to spice it up a little bit. I'd rather make the main batch a little bit on the milder side so my kids can enjoy it. And then if I'm looking for a little additional heat, I can put some pepper flakes in or maybe a couple drops of a hot, sir hot sauce and stir it up before I eat it. So there we go, guys. Smelling, looking great. We will be back in a couple hours when we're ready to serve this up with some fresh uh, cornbread. See you in a little bit. Hey guys, since it's Christmas time, I just wanted to show you this weird light my wife got to shine on the house instead of, I guess, uh, you know, traditional Christmas lights. It's like a laser thing. It's pretty cool. This uh, camera, of course, got its limitations, but uh, I'll show you the device there. You can see it there. It's just a little device shining lights. Kind of cool. I don't know how well this is going to turn out video, but... I'll walk a little closer, see if you can actually see it. Pretty cool. Merry Christmas. Hi, Ava Grace. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Do you like the Christmas tree? Yes. Yeah? Oh, look at that. You excited for Christmas? Those, uh, ornaments. Yeah, the ornaments, they're pretty. All right. Star on the ornament, too. Yeah, there is a star in the ornament. All right, guys, Merry Christmas. We'll be eating that chili in a minute. Say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Wave. Wave. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> See you later. See you later. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. This chili has been cooking all day. It is ready to go. So I'm going to show you how I like it here. I did drain and add those two additional cans of beans. One uh, pinto beans, one dark red kidney beans. You can uh, admit that if you don't like beans. My wife likes beans. So I put those in there and I put them in at the end just because I prefer that. Because they don't get as mushy from cooking all day. So I put, uh, this is how I like it. I put some chili in there. I put some corn chips on the outside. Just kind of something I could munch on and kind of eat it like a dip. Speaking of chili as a dip, you can use this for nachos. You could use this for um, burritos. You can put it on burgers, on hot dogs. I put a couple drops of this uh, sriracha sauce. You can also use the red pepper flakes. Oops. They put a little bit of raw onion, just a little bit, because the rest of the onions have really cooked down. Some sharp cheddar cheese, freshly grated. And then last but not least, a dollop of sour cream. And there you go, guys. Homemade crock pot chili. Be back in a second. We'll try this out. See how my wife likes it. All right, guys, I'm going to try some of this while my wife scoops some out. This looks amazing. Mm. Amazing. Wow. So good and wonderful for a cold winter night. Yeah. The cheese and sour cream kind of take the heat down a little bit. So if you think you put too much uh, hot stuff in it, just put uh, more sour cream and cheese on it. Wow, that's good. I also recommend uh, cornbread. It's good to have on there. It kind of uh, balances out the heat and it's the hot. But boy, this is delicious. If you've never had a homemade crock pot chili, highly recommend. All right. All right, I want you to try. Let's give this a try. You got a spoon and see. In your hand. No, I was looking for a smaller one, but. Okay, I like the smaller spoons. He likes bigger. Okay, but let's give it a try. Oh, this is good. Mm. What do you think? 
I like using it as a dip too. You okay. can make nachos, what have you. So I like the fact that you put pork in there, the pork sausage. It gives it more of a distinct flavor from just the beef that normally goes in there. So I agree. And then my hands are burning, so I have to set this down. Sorry to step out of the limelight here. But no, it's delicious. It's amazing. It's probably the best. It is, hands down, the best batch of chili you've ever made. I'm glad you went for it and did it this way, and it's good. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Please try to make it. Feel free to leave some comments, and please subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be making some more uh, cooking videos. And like the video, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.